She was first in Cannes with a short film that she made for $100 when she was only 21. She's since won the top prize in the director's fortnight section for her debut feature, Wolf and Sheep. She's back this year with The Orphanage. Let's go meet the Afghan director, Shabanu Sadat. Hello, it's a pleasure to meet you. Congratulations you. on your film. You've chosen to wear this T-shirt for your interviews and your press here in Cannes. Tell us why. Because at the moment the world is negotiating peace with Taliban and we have the election in front of us. And uh, there are a lot of meetings abroad of Afghanistan, in Moscow, to Doha, in Kabul and in many other places in the world. In one side of the table is Taliban, and on the other side of the table, the Mujahideen with the mentality of Taliban. And they are negotiating peace, how they can share power together. They are having a lot of condition, but one condition is that women, they have to go back to the same period of Taliban, to the same situation, which means like they are not allowed to work, they are not allowed to do anything, they have to put burqa. And the thing is, like, no one is reacting on this. For me, it means like if this is something that happened in the future, in the soon future. It means that I'm not allowed to make film anymore. I live in Kabul and I'm not allowed to go out. At the moment, do you actually make your films in Afghanistan? I don't uh, shoot the film in Afghanistan, but I live in Afghanistan and I do the casting in Afghanistan. I take care of the costume and props and I have my own production company called Wolf Pictures. But when it comes to shooting, because I'm working with European uh, producer and with European crew, we shoot the film in Tajikistan, on the north of Afghanistan. We are, for the security reason, it's more uh, pleasant to shoot the film. And what's the film industry like in Afghanistan? There is not really a film industry, but there are some filmmakers, some young people that they are making uh, documentaries or uh, short fiction, but also there are some filmmakers that they started to make like, feature fiction and there are people that they are shooting films in Afghanistan. But of course it's difficult to find the high professional uh, cinema people that they can travel to Afghanistan. And it's also difficult to guarantee that nothing will happen in terms of security. You cannot work with the bigger setup because one of the targets of the terrorists is the crowd. And Kabul, five million people living there. So it's completely impossible to avoid crowd. You're here in Cannes with your second feature film, The Orphanage. Tell us about the story. The story is about Kodrat. 15 years, a boy who is living in the streets of Kabul, uh, in front of a cinema uh, where he survives by selling cinema tickets in black markets. And he is a big, big, huge fan of uh, Bollywood cinema. And one day that he is not very lucky, the police catch him and he end up in the Russian orphanage where his life completely gets changed. He get education, he travel all over Soviet Union. Uh, he finds friends, uh, but he's not very lucky at the end of the film because the political situation of Kabul is changing, Mujahideen is coming, Soviet have left already, uh, and then they have to face their reality. One thing that I found quite surprising is it shows how life under the Soviet rule was actually quite beneficial for these poor boys who had no family, who had yeah. nowhere to live. Why did you want to focus on this period in Afghanistan? What I knew before, before I read my friend's uh, diary uh, that I used for the a script of the film. You know, I just heard a lot of bad things about the uh, communism and also the experience of, uh, you know, the time of Afghan Soviet war in Afghanistan, that people were saying, like, it was, it is exactly like the American, and they occupied Afghanistan for 10 years, which caused a lot of killing. But when I read my friend's diary, I found out that actually, if there was a dark part, there was also a bright side, because, if my friend didn't end up in that orphanage, he could be a fighter. He was a child living on the street without any parents, without anyone taking care of him. 
He was coming from this uh, traditional religious background of rural Afghanistan, where everyone, like, uh, they have no clue what is behind the mountain, you know? So it was very easy for him to be a fighter, to be a fundamentalist. <laughs> Tell us about this switch, because the film switches between this fantasy Bollywood world and the harsh reality yeah. of the orphanage. Why did you want to focus so much on Bollywood? Well, uh, first, I thought it's very impossible to avoid to not talk about Bollywood, especially because the period of the film was like 1989, when it was the golden time for everything, but specifically for Bollywood cinema. I mean, because of the friendship, the special friendship between India and Afghanistan on that time, and also now. If there was an Indian film releasing in Mumbai, the second day, the next day, it was screened in Kabul. And people, they really like, uh, they knew all the film industry, they knew who is, who is who, they knew all the lyrics, they could speak the language very fluently just because they watch Indian film. It's very funny because, in my opinion, Afghan people, they are not really expressive people. Mm, and maybe it's because of the situation of the country that they need to protect themselves. You look at their face and you cannot read if they are happy or if they're sad. But on the other hand, they love Bollywood cinema where people, they express their uh, extreme high level of happiness or high level of revenge or uh, fighting and dancing and singing. Uh, there's also a sequence focusing on a Rambo t-shirt and Sylvester Stallone is going to be at the festival yes. um, and his film Rambo First Blood is going to show we tried we tried to have him for the screening but he was uh, coming like on 19 or something why was it important um, to have Rambo in the film because you know like on 80s in the other chapter of Rambo there is this episode that he's together with Mujahideen and he's fighting against uh, against Soviets so this film was kind of uh, selling in the black market suddenly in Kabul you could find this t-shirt and it was about power which i thought it's it's very important to for that for that period of the time the orphanage is part two in a five part series the first was wolf and sheep which premiered here a few years ago in the director's fortnight as well it won a big prize and um, won the main prize in the director's fortnight Cannes has really been a quite an important place for your career you first came with your short film i think you made it for a hundred dollars or something <laughs> uh, you know the story <laughs> when you were only 20 um, tell us about the importance of Cannes for you. Well, I think it's, uh, it's very important because you have the stamp of the festival on your film. It's, uh, it let the film explore more festivals. It let the buyers to look at the film. As a person, as a filmmaker who's trying to tell a different picture of Afghanistan that has nothing to do with the cliché picture, I think it's very important that I can have this confirmation on the film because it helps the film to be seen and it helps me to dare to tell more stories like this. You were born in Iran. You moved back to a very rural village in Afghanistan after September 11, um, when you were about 11. And you lived in this tiny little village. There was no education. I think there was no water or electricity. How did you find your way to be a filmmaker and be here at the Cannes Film Festival? <laughs> I guess I was just very lucky <laughs> because I didn't even have the wish to become a filmmaker. I wanted to study physics. And then when I was 18, I finished my high school and I went to Kabul to my sister who was married and living in Kabul. And I didn't really know how things work in Kabul because I was living in a village and then it was my first time being in this crowded city. I had only one week to find a, a place where I could pass the exam for the university. And finally I found this place and I passed the exam. And right when I got the paper, I saw that I, I'm passing the wrong exam and that's the cinema and theatre faculty. <laughs> so that's how you found your way into exactly. <laughs> And then I thought, uh, OK, if this happens, it, it means like maybe it should happen. And tell us about the first film that you made for $100 and how that ended up here at Cannes. <laughs> 
I think that film was very important for me. You know, even now that I'm thinking about it, I made it like 10 years ago in 2009. Vice Versa One. Vice Versa One. And it was just right after I uh, finished the French workshop in Kabul. They taught us the basic of cinema documentaries. It was my first time that I got a camera and I even didn't know where I have to press the record. You know, I was so unfamiliar with this, but I really had some ideas. I rent this camera for one day and I went to the location and I don't even have a cast. So I knock on the door of the people in the village, like we are shooting something, uh, can you send your children? Uh, you know, like in a very amateur way. I still that I'm working with the budget of 1.5 million or I'm working with the European crew. I'm still doing this rock and roll kind of shooting, you know, like deciding things in the very last moment or not being scared to get rid of 30 pages of a script two days before shooting, you know, which I think it comes from that short film. So I finished this film and I didn't know what to do with it. So it was on the desktop of my computer. And then by accident, I applied to the Cine Fondation. Which is the sort of body that helps young filmmakers here yes. at Cannes. And then when I was there, I met George, the head of Cine Fondation, and he told me, where did you send your short film? We really like it. And I was like, I didn't send it to anywhere. And he was like, do you want to try the Director's Fortnite? And I even didn't know how prestigious the Director's <laughs> Fortnite. So I said, OK, yes. And I sent it to the director's phone and, and like some months after he sent me an email, we select your film. And I was like, OK. <laughs> and I came to Cannes in 2011 for the first time. It was the beginning, Shavin. It's, it's a real inspiration, your story. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.